नमस्ते सो वी कंटिन्यू विद द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ दिस एफोरिज्म दैट वी हैड रेड लास्ट टाइम अबाउट इमोटैलिटी नाउ बिफोर वी एंटर इन टू दिस पार्ट टू विच डील्स विथ फिजिकल इमोटैलिटी वी कैन टॉक अबाउट सम ऑफ द फंडामेंटल वेज दैट इंडियन स्पिरिचुअल थाट एंड एक्सपीरियंस हैज अंडरस्टूड द सब्जेक्ट so the search for immortality is not new it is there you you find it in ancient fables of egypt and uh, greek mythologies as well as of course indian thought and why is there a seeking for immortality so one simple answer, uh, answer can be that because deep within something in us intuitively knows that something in us is immortal and there is a seeking for immortality in built this is only unique to human beings animals seek survival but human beings seek immortality and this manifests in number of ways one of them is the commonest one is that since uh, it's difficult for the one human body to become immortal we want to see something of us transmitted and growing not just surviving but extending into the children so there is the whole idea of santan and that's why it is said though this not to be taken so seriously that if you don't have a santan it seems you don't uh, have a safe passage you need the santan to it's almost like passing the parcel it's like you are extending in in the child so this is one most primal way of trying to maintain at least a continuity if not immortality nature has this mechanism through which a species continues even though bodies die the second way which is which happens in those who are a little more developed is to immortalize their work so as long as a work is immortalized it it lasts till that time the person continues to exist this is a manita and there is a very interesting story about it by the way so the story is about king nimi so some of us may have heard about uh, uh not not nimi indradhanu indradhanu is one of the purvaj of uh, orikshvaku dynasty so indradhanu dies and he is given a place in heaven indradhanu dies means his body dies technically he is given a place in heaven so there comes a time when the uh, lord of the heavens uh, he tells them that he tells him that now the time has come for you to leave this place please vacate because there are other people who have to come so he says but i want to stay here so he says but your time is up so he says is there a way that i can stay here long much longer so he says yes there is a way and the way is if still on earth there is someone or there are people who recognize you by your work by your name by your fame so we can grant you that so he comes and he meets rishi markande and he he says do you know me he says markande says well you belong to a much earlier generation i don't know anything about you <laughs> then he goes to he says but maybe that uh, bagula may know you so he goes to the bagula work and the work also says i don't know really Uh, who you are then he says but maybe the tortoise will know now we know that tortoise lives for 500 years so he goes to the tortoise and he says ah yes yes i remember thank you so much i know you you are a very you have been a very kind and a very noble king i have not only heard but once you had yourself given me a place you know and i made a nice pond in which i could stay and breathe and live so he goes back and tells him well there is one tortoise on earth who knows me and he is allowed to extend his term in heaven so there is a very interesting aphorism of shivinda where he says he who has done even a little good uh, will see the will look upon the face of the eternal now this little good is of course not the many good deeds that we do but it has to be taken in this sense of good that is a lasting good something which you know creates its impress so same we see with people like you know great seers writers kalidas valmiki vyas and uh, of course uh, 
beings like Swami Vivekananda. So that's this another way of immortalizing yourself is through the work. So one is the inferior way where you just extend the genes into the child and then you depart. Uh, apparently satisfied that something of me is continuing. The second is to immortalize your work in time. But obviously this is not what uh, one is fully satisfied with. Also because one of the big challenges for human beings is that we all want permanence, but we are playing with transience. We all want infinity, but we are always dealing with finite things. So, how to really, is there a way that things can become permanent? So, these were the questions which I feel very happy and uh, proud that our great forefathers contemplated these questions. You don't find this kind of a philosophy at least existing in the, there was once upon a time, all over the world people contemplated this, the Chaldeans, the Persians, much before they got converted. But now this is hardly, but in India we still have the seeking and the answer. The other day I was mentioning to someone and the person was saying that uh, I think, uh, I think, I think like that. So I said, why do you think and how do you think? He said, what do you mean? I said, see, in Kenupanishad it starts from that, about what sends thought upon its track. So, when they contemplated upon these questions, they found some answers. And these answers, they didn't want us to turn only into belief system. They wanted that we too can walk the way. That's what yoga is about. And discover the same truths that they discovered. So, with regard to immortality, they made the first discovery that there is something within us which is immortal. Nityo nityanam chetanas chetanam. Something that survives all the mutations of time. It is... Uh, it, it passes from life to life, as Shubhinda says, passenger from life to life, from scale to scale. And as it passes from life to life, it keeps growing, evolving, putting on a personality of its own. It extracts all the experiences, grows stronger and develops into a full-fledged psychic being. So this was their first discovery and the discovery of the psychic being is accompanied by an Intuitive conviction of immortality. Now, I know this is a very tricky area. Yeah, how about the intuition may be wrong? So, because those who are not accustomed to intuition, obviously, uh, well, intuitions can also be objectively verified. Say, in the life of a human being, when you find the soul, all fear of death vanishes simply because you know that you are immortal. This is not by any kind of mental thought imposing and trying to get over the fear. If mentally you know that you have a soul, nevertheless fear will grip you. But if you have discovered the soul, there will be no fear. So the objective sign of it will be how you face the scenario when the physical body is disintegrating. Because you know, even if the physical body disintegrates, the house is going but not I. So th this is one very objective sign which you would know inside and people can observe. I mean, there are so many instances here I have seen where people had developed that kind of consciousness, where they knew that this is just a body and they, they were continuing to lead a life uh, in the inner realms. Now, of course, there is a kind of objective uh, evidence which has come through recording of near-death experiences that something in us survives death. And even after disintegration of the body, it continues to exist. It can come back sometimes if the link is not broken. And sometimes it can even report experiences. So we know the famous story of Anita Murjani. So it is now coming through different doors that there is something in us which survives the death of the body. So this is one kind of immortality which the seers had discovered, the yogis had discovered. And it can be, it is the easiest first discovery that anybody can make. Mother says it is the easiest thing of all the big things in yoga. This is the easiest thing. To discover the psychic being. Because it's my own true self. So all that we need is to disengage and disidentify with the false layer that I am the body, I am the emotions, I am these vital passions. And to have this fire of aspiration and go deeper and deeper. I am this thought, I am this belief. And then a time comes if one persists and if one has the sincere seeking, 
a day comes when the door opens and one is uh, aware of the conscious immortal being within us so this is one one part there are other ramifications also of this experience which we need not go into the second immortality they discovered was that well uh, in this finite world this universe is a very amazing uh, open system it's a it's a very intriguing thing because if the birth of the universe is from something finite it should be closed system finite means a limited limited energy it whatever you may say but limited energy limited everything so limited substance but we see that it is constantly expanding which is a very mind boggling thing so they discovered that behind this finite universe finite uh, human consciousness finite objects there is the infinite and they gave the terms diti and aditi diti is the limited divided consciousness and aditi is the undivided infinite consciousness so these two they discovered now this also answers the question how was god born so <laughs> well uh, the moment you answer this question god was born from here the question will again go back to that x how was x born so you go to y it was born from y how was y born but the moment you say that behind all birth birth is a limitation behind the birth there is a infinite consciousness then this question uh, is no more valid because infinite has no starting point no end point so the question of birth and death doesn't arise this to they discovered and this discovery we all can make by going beyond the mind when the limited frame in which we live that burst open slowly the being extends into the cosmic being cosmic consciousness and that's what we read last time that we can discover the the individual self as one with the universal self then we discover the divine in all beings all creatures and then we know that this body is only one among many bodies so these two discoveries have been made which we read in the previous uh, uh, part now comes the next part that okay fine these two discovery has been made what is new to be discovered so new to be discovered is this discovery of the infinite consciousness and the soul within still something is missing why it entered into the finite consciousness so that's where we have the answer it is for manifestation body or matter is a means of manifestation without matter there is no manifestation matter not as we experience it but the original matter but it is that which has become this so we can equally say so body is a means of manifesting what is inside is very easily understood by this that i may have a very beautiful poem inside me but if i can't speak and i can't write this remains buried inside and goes with me so that's what manifestation is about i may have the best of music inside me but if the instrument is not there so it doesn't express itself so all creation is a manifestation of the divine for which instruments are being created and if we look at it like this then the whole universe bears a new significance and i think we spoke about it maybe last time or earlier each object is a thought of god the mountain the river the ocean the bird and one one discovers that these are ways through which something of that is manifesting that's why we see in vibhuti yoga where shri krishna is asked how do i look upon you ultimately you are beyond space time form so he says wherever you see anything of preeminence know that i am in that so that's how the vibhuti yoga comes so this body is an instrument meant for the expression of our inmost self and now comes the question that but the fact remains it more often than not obstructs rather than manifests how many time you all have experienced that the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak something in us wants things in a certain way even an ideal forget about the soul even an ideal we are not able to really live because we are as if the body follows its own law its own way of life its own imprints its own conditioning habits call it whatever so first thing is that this is an instrument but a very poor instrument 
So how this body can become a perfect instrument? Because then only a divine life can really be established. Otherwise, we'll make keep on doing the same discovery. I have discovered the non-dual consciousness. All that is fine. <laughs> But that non-dual consciousness, the moment it enters into the physical being, even our mind and vital and emotions, it is unable to express itself. So here we come now to this question, which we took up last time. Mother says, Mother takes up this question. How this shadow, this instrument, Shobinda has used the word shadow and an instrument for the body. Why it is a shadow? Very evidently because if one has the Darshan of the spirit, then this is a shadow. And to take an example, when you go to a temple and you say, Oh, this is. Are today is Rath Yatra, no? So Rath Yatra is going on all over. So we have a nice uh, little couplet by Tagore. Okay, everywhere Rath Yatra is going on. So everybody is bowing to the, to the Lord uh, on the road. So he writes that. Pot Bhavi Ami Dev, the road thinks that I am the God to whom they are bowing. They are bowing on the road. Rath Bhavi Ami Dev, the chariot thinks I am God because see, I am the one to whom they are bowing. Then the Murti, that thinks I am the God to whom they are bowing. And then finally he says, Hase Antar Yami. <laughs> he who dwells within us He takes a good laugh Now this is the whole paradox That if you Because we don't see this glory of glories We think this temple this Now this is important as a symbol At a certain stage of evolution But when we go and we do pranam to a vigraha We say that you know Ram ji ke darshan ho gaye Krishna ji ke darshan ho gaye It's alright this is true But we must know that the real darshan we still didn't have. So it should become an entry point for that which exceeds all time and space. And once we have the darshan, then it changes our life entirely. That's what we see in Arjuna, before the Vishwarup, after the Vishwarup. So in a way, Gita, in a certain sense, culminates with the Vishwarup. But after that, he says that now it's all clear to me. So, when we compare that with the body, it is obviously a shadow. In fact, very obscure. It's like a kalatikka, that's all. <laughs> but this body can and must become an instrument of the divine. This is the uh, wonderful thing that the Mother and Shubindu tell us. It's, it, it is like an obstacle in the beginning because it's very dense and obscure. But once it is capable of becoming a Conscious instrument of the divine. That is what will fulfill the whole purpose of creation, which is to manifest the divine on the basis of matter. Shosi says, how this shadow, this instrument can serve the development of the soul? First question is, that does it really, can it help to, for the soul to grow? And how by cultivating the instrument, one can be of help to future lives? are questions which are not without interest. This is very interesting, cultivating the instrument for future lives. Ordinarily, one says that I am doing this exercise only to remain healthy and in this life, I will probably have to can cut down on the doctor's bill. That's the whole idea. But just imagine what is she saying by cultivating this instrument, how we can help future lives. So, she has raised the question and she is answering it. Each time that the soul takes birth in a new body, it comes with the intention of having a new experience which will help it to develop and to perfect its personality. So it's like promotion. One life, kindergarten. Next few lives, standard one. If you are a very good student, you get a double jump. Standard one to standard three. Then lingering, lingering, through many lives, the soul grows. So that's why the soul is immortal but not immutable. Because it is growing, it is changing. And what is it changing into? The original plan. It must grow into the Godhead. It must grow into a God. That's what it is meant for. 
and when it grows into a god then it takes part in the devasur sangram that's how the mystery is solved that how did kings like uh, dasharath pururavas they participated in the devasur sangram how can they participate so man can grow into a god because the battle is going on inside us also and when one grows into a god discovers the psychic element then one can participate in this great battle so she says that every time it comes takes a new body with the intention of having a new experience which will help it to develop and to perfect its personality that is the game going on behind the scene it's like an actor who assumes different roles in different movies and then he grows ultimately into a great master you know so some of these i i forget now which particular actor anyways that's not important so he used to do a particular kind of roles uh, as a kind of gangster and everything so once he was given a role of something which was like humor and he says i was waiting that somebody will give me a different kind of a role in another life he does the role of a romantic hero and through all this ultimately then you become paripakwa mature otherwise you do all every time one kind of role so you have not really grown because there are many sides and shades which you have never developed so each time it comes it takes a new body a different kind of experience that is how the this is how the psychic being is formed from life to life and becomes a completely conscious and independent personality which once it has arrived at the summit of its development is free to choose not only the time of its incarnation but the place the purpose and the work to be accomplished so this idea that every time every soul chooses birth and death is not true it has to develop to a point where it can make a conscious choice up till then you are a helpless mechanism of nature yantra runi ni maya you are caught in the wheel you think you are moving the wheel like the fly on the wheel believes it is moving the wheel but the wheel is moving and the fly is moving along with it and somebody else is driving the wheel so that's how it is but when it develops fully when it has gone through all the roles and climbs at the summit of all the experiences then it says okay fine now there is nothing more to learn or gain it has passed phd stamped and then it is ready to choose whatever you know the body the time the place the circumstances the events and most importantly the mission so based on the work it chooses its spot and the kind of life its descent into the physical body is necessarily a descent into darkness ignorance unconsciousness and for a very long time it must labor simply to bring a little consciousness into the material substance of the body before it can make use of it for the experience it has come for so why this this process of birth and death even though there is the immortal self inside is a very cumbersome process wasteful process apart from the fact that there can be accidents that's also true but it's a very cumbersome process because when you enter it is like it used to be that advertisement where one has uh, i think fallen and he says mai ka hu kaun hu after head injury people have this they forget completely this is much more because that fall is of a much greater severity fall is a fall in consciousness you have entered people who go beyond they remember see that is the story in bhagavat puran where this uh, king wants to uh, perform a sacrifice out of revenge and then his father appears he says why are you doing all this he says you are my father out of revenge he says which father whose father am i don't do this nonsensical thing but when on earth you have all these impressions you have these struggles fights but when we leave the body then for some time we remember all this and then it vanishes we enter into a very different state very different world altogether in very different consciousness where all this is just vanishes and only its essence is absorbed 
सो इफ वी कल्टिवेट द बॉडी बाय क्लियर साइटेड एंड रैशनल मेथड एट द सेम टाइम वी आर हेल्पिंग द ग्रोथ ऑफ द सोल इट्स प्रोग्रेस एंड एनलाइटनमेंट सो इट इज टू स्ट्रगल बिकॉज इट इज एंटर्ड इन टू ए मटीरियल विच इज वेरी ऑब्सक्योर वेरी डेंस बट इफ द मेटीरियल कैन बी मेड लाइटर लेस डेंस देन the recovery of the soul is so much more faster so first step is that this soul which is lost in the obscurity normally it takes many years of earthly life before it becomes conscious that there is something it doesn't remember like that that i have fallen from there even for a developed being so if from childhood there is this stress on physical culture that's why we see in this school so much stress on physical culture so that that time is shortened otherwise it's so dense and obscure that will be very difficult it's like people who are constantly sick find it difficult to really of course exceptions apart because the body is not permitting them even to sit and concentrate to sit and meditate so the importance of physical culture and then she gives us the secret physical culture is the process of infusing consciousness into the cells of the body one may or may not know it but it is a fact when we concentrate to make our muscles move according to our will when we endeavor to make our limbs more supple to give them an agility or a force or a resistance or a plasticity which they do not naturally possess we infuse into the cells of the body a consciousness which was not there before thus turning it into an increasingly homogeneous and receptive instrument which progresses in and by its activity she has used the word homogeneous because she later explains that well people who do only one type of exercises like blacksmiths or those who are doing physical labor normally one set of muscles they are developing but by homogeneous is meant the entire physical system which includes not only the muscles but the heart the brain everything organs that's why in ayurveda siddhant we have everything for the entire cleansing process right down to the kidneys the liver why because all these organs must get their right kind of exercise if we burden them then they become gross it's like if you have a heavy stomach it's difficult to meditate people often say this uh, भूखे पेट ना भजन गोपाला इफ यू आर हंगरी यू कैन डू भजन बट दे डोंट रियलाइज टाइम्स हैव चेंज नाउ इट इज टाइम टू से पेट भरा ना भजन गोपाला बिकॉज नाउ दर इज अ प्रॉब्लम ऑफ प्लेंटी मोस्ट ऑफ द प्लेसेस पीपल जस्ट ईट एंड ईट एंड ईट एंड देन बिकम सो डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज विद एवरी मील वी आर एब्जॉर्बिंग लॉट ऑफ अनकॉन्शियसनेस इन टू द बॉडी and with non vegetarian to 100% and therefore when a meal is cooked light in a satvik consciousness the right person who is cooking that's why you know in the dining room it is written the food that is prepared in the dining room has the mother's force in it because food is one of the means through which we absorb lot of unconsciousness why because it's coming right from matter with animal food it is unconsciousness plus all that rage wrath god knows what all but with vegetarian food the advantage it it contains basically the primary element of life which nourishes matter so it is that way healthy so it's not only bhuke pet but if you have excess so that's why in ayurveda you have this siddhant neither excess nor less neither overuse nor abuse disuse right use moderation balance all these were time tested principles now we have lost it so we rely on medication but that's a different story altogether so by homogeneous she means every part of the body must get its exercise so it infuses and it should be a conscious process so this one of the biggest uh, um uh, i'm sorry to say but kind of a fraud are those watches which tell you the steps i have seen people i ask them that so are you doing exercise no no i have walked today 5000 steps so as they where did you walk are i was doing this that that doesn't help it is a conscious process 
It's not about burning calories. See, the whole approach is different. In allopathy, it's the calorie you must burn so that it doesn't deposit its fat. But here it is infusing consciousness into the body, which is a very different thing altogether. Why? Because when you infuse consciousness, matter begins to become lighter, more receptive to the spirit's force. And it helps the delivery of the imprisoned child. Chill delivery. <laughs> so this is what she explains. This is the primary importance of physical culture. And of course we can, she says that, you know, different like writers, they bring a lot of consciousness in their brain. I remember, you know, Niroda had written Savitri, you know, uh, for a very, uh, I mean, you can imagine the brain, what it must have contained. Because Shurbindo's words are going inside and then he is writing it. Of course, he used to play tennis also, but primarily. So after he left the body and uh, there was, as is sometimes done with people who leave their body here, that you give time. So after, uh, you know, when they decided to take his body or the cremation, I think it was after 24 hours or whatever, one of the persons in the ashram is still alive. I won't name, but who has it? Everybody knows that mother gave him this occult capacity which was inbuilt in him and he then developed it. He lost it also, but still, you know, there are there is in him a certain occult capacity. So he came rushing and saying there is still consciousness in his brain which is not withdrawn. So they postponed the time. And it's so true. That's why one has to allow time because once you have infused consciousness, it takes time to withdraw. Because that's the whole process. And then when you do that, you are allowed time to withdraw. So all this goes with us. It's our nidhi. That's why this hurrying and burning or putting into grave is never a good thing. Because you lose a work you have done. The body has imprints which you need to gather. So that in next life you carry it. That's why she has used the word future lives. So mother was never in a hurry to burn the body or take because... I mean, it may not matter in, in a certain, it's like uh, organ transplant. Uh, you will never hear yogis giving their organs for transplant. They are very compassionate. Why? Because uh, that body has contained a lot of imprints of certain experiences. This is much before physical transformation we can speak about. So we have to allow time and if we allow time and from that body, the soul extracts that experience, then in the next life it facilitates. Already it begins to develop a true physical from within the psychic being. So, so put it like that, that the psychic personality contains the true mental, true vital, true physical. So last time we read that whatever is joined with the psychic, that becomes immortal. And if there is the true physical fused with the psychic, it will come back and it will automatically start operating in the physical body. So, lot of importance to physical culture she gave so that you can shorten the time of the recovery. Then we will um, go a little couple of passages below. Okay. Then she speaks about that it has to be done consciously, otherwise if you are just a worker and peasant who is doing mechanically, that doesn't help. That will develop muscles, but very often it may lead to deformities. So this is not what she is saying. She is speaking of a conscious process. And that conscious process can be a walk. One can walk consciously. One can do whatever set of exercise one chooses consciously. So that's why she said that we do not consider, from our experience, we do not consider that only one set of exercises can be considered yogic. Any exercise done with the attitude of yoga, that becomes yogic. So, I think tomorrow is the International Yoga Day and it's important to understand. It's not just about doing asanas. Even in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, Ashtang Yoga, asanas are one part which comes somewhere in the middle 
यम नियम आसन प्राणायाम प्रत्याहार ध्यान धारणा समाधि बिकॉज इट कम्स और धारणा ध्यान समाधि सो इट कम्स एट अ पॉइंट बिकॉज द बॉडी हेज टू बिकम एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट कॉन्शियस सो दैट इट लिबरेट्स दैट कॉन्शियसनेस विच इज इन साइड इट डूइंग जस्ट मैकेनिकली एक्सरसाइज लीस्ट ऑफ ऑल फॉर टेलीविजन शो इज नॉट वॉट रियली योग आसना इज इट इज आसना इट इज एक्सरसाइज गुड फॉर हेल्थ इन दिस अनडिनाइबल लॉट ऑफ रिसर्च इज हैव बिन डन इट इज गुड फॉर हेल्थ बट नथिंग मोर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन आसना एंड योग आसना and any exercise including walk when done consciously with the idea of infusing consciousness into the cells will become yogic exercise so here she is drawing a distinction between doing things unconsciously mechanically and doing it consciously okay so then she says therefore we can say without fear of being mistaken that physical culture is the sadhana of the body and that all sadhana necessarily helps to hasten the achievement of the goal also you if the body is not fit how is it going to receive the higher forces that's why we see that in the ashram it is so strange you don't have a technically an official meditation hall and people look for it i said why ne meditation karna hai to meditation here is an ongoing process all life is you ka <laughs> it's a constant remembrance it's not just sitting you can do that also i mean anywhere in the ashram you can sit but it's an it should be an ongoing process but you have a very systematic elaborate department of physical education where they have best of things meant for the infusing because that is the difficult part meditation is something which should have be happening all the time but physical culture needs a specialized effort and that's why the hours of meditation or contemplation should always be complemented with physical exercise and of course emotional exercise which means attitudes all this is a package all yoga is a ongoing process so that's why he says that this physical culture is strictly speaking sadhana of the body provided it is done with that attitude the more consciously you do it the quicker and more general the result but even if you do it blindly if you can see no further than the tips of your fingers or your feet or your nose you help the overall development and this is very uh, easy to see many people often you know when they sit for meditation they go to sleep why because there is too much of inertia and tamas in the mind in the body especially so simple thing which helps is do a kind of warm up physical exercise deep breathing then you sit for meditation now what is happening is that it for the moment it shakes up you see inertia tamas so the entire thing shakes up enters into a kind of rhythmic movement and then when you sit for meditation it becomes easy after vigorous sports many people feel a state of inner quietude when they played a good game you feel like just sitting quietly i think everybody who has played a game knows after an hour two hours of a good game cricket table tennis anything you just feel like sitting quietly and you feel a kind of serenity even a kind of joy so that's why in all schools if one is really looking toward the future physical education conscious physical education should be compulsory it's missing and then she says finally one can say that any discipline that is followed rigorously sincerely deliberately finally one can say that any discipline that is followed rigorously sincerely deliberately is a considerable help
for it enables life on earth to attain its goal more rapidly and prepares it to receive the new life now comes another very cryptic it looks like a very natural sentence but she is saying it is helping all life if i do exercise how is it that others are being helped two two ways one which we can see very directly people get inspired that the only advantage of doing exercises in a group i have heard people who say oh group join karne se we do it why because you have a time slot everybody is doing it so you feel like doing it but at home you say okay i am going to do but always the mind gives excuses so you get inspired but there is another reason also and that reason is that there is a continuity of a physical substance of a mental thought just like one person's thought can influence others even if it is unspoken one beautiful noble feeling can influence others induce others one beautiful gesture can inspire many 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 see that's why the importance of reading books like ramayan and mahabharata you know we are reading about somebody whom many people would say whether they existed or didn't exist no that is not important that is the actually the least important question the important question it can it inspire me still and awaken the rama hood the buddha hood the christ hood the krishna hood inside me if it can do it it has served the purpose and it does it even when we read the physical description of lord ram you know ajan bhujishar chap dharik sangram jit kar dushna you know when you read that you really something in the body itself wants to be like that when you read the description of how arjun is even physical body there is a kind of aspiration which awakens psychological being so it is because there is a continuity across time and space this is our idea that this is divided separate so when one person engages in physical culture or five more slowly it become tends to become a universal movement we see that today actually how did physical culture and today we recognize international yoga day see all this because in the 60s it started post supramental manifestation but it didn't pick up to that extent 60s research in yoga and meditation started yoga asanas and meditation some positive results were found then slowly the doctor started recommending then it started as a one odd person i mean our childhood i am not sure many people remember people running cycling as a way of life of course we we had no choice but to cycle so probably you know walking well that was our way of you know living but now in the cities very consciously people choose and so that's another thing which you know city planners must know they keep everything except parks where people can go do jogging this is something which you have to pick up we just keep raising buildings at least in india there should be spaces for public parks where you can go do some deep breathing and they should be well protected not become places for hooligans because that is part of our growth and development so now we see physical exercise has become like a exploded like a big industry worldwide movement some people started some point of time within 40 years it has spread like wildfire 40 50 years so she says that it helps because it spreads and when it does that at one point of time the human body who knows even the genetically some kind of change is taking place you see we don't realize the impact for instance why are human be indians more obese and prone to diabetes we know the reason uh, the reason is that there was famine in in 1940s british induced famine uh, that whole story is known how things were taken for the soldiers and everybody and indians were left to die saying that their life is not worth it and so what we did was we developed genes to store fat 
it was its survival mechanism <laughs> so we developed genes to store fat and this disintegrates into glucose because this was a necessity now it's 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 scientific uh, it's a scientific thing now we have the genes <laughs> and so we store fat which releases glucose but we also we don't have famine anymore we have plenty so now it takes long but basically that teaches a lesson that and there, there are many such lessons that if in a group the concept of physical culture spreads it is going to help the other generations and one day we also will come into a body which is another generation so we are helping future lives apart from the fact that if the physical substance tends to fuse with the psychic then it's even more easier so she says that it is helps when we do it deliberately it enables life on earth to attain its goal more rapidly and prepares it to receive the new life so today for example we see that people are getting fed up of uh, allopathic medicine and they are looking for alternate ways uh, it's very unfortunate that we call it alternate that was another very big uh, scam the rockefeller institute and how it you know declared that all this is alternate this was the mainstream medicine <laughs> nature cure and all this so anyways but more and more people are seeking for help one day it, it is bound to happen that human beings will end up discovering ways to heal oneself and all these formations this disease this disease is going to collapse because there are more and more people it's becoming now trendy let me try it myself through this way that way initially there will be failures but one day you click on to something you have a genetic change inside for a particular disease and you'll see it is vanishing human beings are once again returning back to a self healing process this is bound to happen this time to happen uh, once we lose faith in the typical allopathic system to discipline oneself is to hasten the arrival of this new life and the contact with the supramental reality it is going to hasten even physical culture is going to hasten the supramental manifestation upon earth what a wonderful thing she is saying that's the least we can do to make life on earth progress minimum <laughs> as it is the physical body as it is the physical body is truly nothing but a very disfigured shadow of the eternal life of the self now she is connecting with all that we had read last time but this physical body is capable of progressing development through each individual formation the physical substance progresses wonderful this is so beautifully is this the perfection of expression so she is saying that though this body right now is a disfigured shadow but it is capable of progressive development this part is easy to see through each individual formation the physical substance progresses and the physical substance is not just mind every time one person works upon the body often people say this that oh this person believed that you know faith can cure and he tried and ultimately he died so i tell them that it is not a waste you have not understood the process there will be people who will try and fail but their failure is paving the way for generations of success all dreams materialize like that the dream of flying in modern times you see how da vinci dreamed right brothers or talpade ji doesn't matter who somewhere somebody picked up probably looked into the ancient viman shastra that's not important but he made some kind of design which was flying long back in the greek mythologies people tried to tie wax uh, with wax uh, feathers of a bird and try to fly so they failed but after several failures today we have entered the space age of flying so invariably in the beginning individuals will fail but these individuals who have failed will pave the way to the collective victory 
So even if an individual does not succeed immediately, yet it has helped in the physical substance becoming better. So that was what mother wrote to Dada one of the sometime that what does he represent? She wrote very beautiful things for Dada, Pranabda. One of the things was that um, material substance capable of being psychicized. And she told him that you could have chosen to be you know, an intellectual, a writer or anything. But you chose this field which is the most obscure. So people often say, but then, you know, he had knee problem, he went. No, but he has helped. We may not realize it today. But the kind of work that is done on his body and through his body and many others, that is nourishing the earth consciousness. Even when one leaves the body and one has worked upon the body, open to the divine grace, it, it is not a waste because it primes the generations to come because all bodies are Ultimately, one body. That is the secret. So finally, she says, the physical substance progresses and one day it will be capable of building a bridge between physical life as we know it and the supramental life which is to manifest. So all those who have gone before us, that's why we should be always grateful the mother's yoga of the cells, Shobindo bringing that light into the physical substance. And many of those, they are the great supramental sun and many of the satellites of that sun on whose physical body this work took place. We may not see its result now because it's a collective process. All evolution is a collective thing. We may not see it now. But just wait for some more time that consciousness which has gone inside the cells is beginning to change. It is bound to change. It is still working in the physical substance of creation. And that is an immortal consciousness. So it cannot die. That's why even Sri withdrew from the physical body. So somebody gave a notice. I think Amal Kiran had written that his physical, uh, his mortal remains will be entered into the Samadhi and the mother struck it off and said, there was nothing immortal about, there was nothing mortal about Sri Aurobindo. Each cell contained the immortal fire. That fire will continue to burn. It's like a Yagavedi. And it will continue to work and act upon the physical substance upon earth. One day, there will be a tipping point. Body is becoming more and more ready, more and more ready. And we will see that the bridge between the material life here and the supramental life. Inwardly it is built, but even outwardly we will see its manifestation. So this is the whole program of the physical immortality. It cannot be of one person. It has to be of a... Even other spheres, see, there is, there is an interdependence of the individual and the collectivity. But in physical substance, which is the most obscure medium, the interdependence is very, very strong. See, that's why physical bonds are tenacious. Very strong. So the olden solution used to be, if you are very near, it, it creates a very deep bonding because physical matter is like that. So even this substance will be progressively, it is already being illumined. We can see children, for instance, just one or two evidences. Today's children eat very little. And as a doctor, I have heard this common refrain from mothers, khata nahi hai. My mama ji could take 50, 90 puris with a cutter of, you know, kheer. He lived to 95, lean and thin. <laughs> that most people were like that. If you really go back in Dawat, I don't know whether people would eat like God knows what. Now, it has come down in many children. They eat less. The height has increased. Women are taller. The average height has increased. The average lifespan has increased. The, the whole aspiration for physical culture. So basically, it's acting from behind, within the body cells. 
and it is like a fire which is spreading like an undercurrent and one day when sufficient number of beings are ready that's how all new species appear like an explosion from within we'll see even the physical body wearing the crown of immortality namaste <laughs>